Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Monday, November 18th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Moderate flaring has returned to the sun with multiple M flares today, including this M3.7. We also have a strong storm in the west dumping heavy snow. Keep calm. It's boom time. Washington State and the West Coast brace for severe weather and possible bomb cyclone. It appears as if atmospheric river after atmospheric river are going to be pummeling the Pacific Northwest in the coming days. Here's the snowfall that fell just in the last 24 hours. Snow fell all the way down into southern New Mexico in the last day. But the big winter chicken dinner is the West with up to a foot or more falling just yesterday alone. And there will be a reality check of colder air, windy storms, even a little snow ahead in the central and eastern U.S. as well. Take a look at the forecast lows compared to average. Orlando by Friday getting down to 45 degrees. Atlanta will see 36 on Friday as the chill down in the south continues Houston in the 40s Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Severe thunderstorms rumbling through the southern plains today as well. Full forecast coming up. Let's talk about tropical storm Sarah turning deadly and drenching the northern coast of Honduras, causing intense floods that collapsed multiple bridges. There's one of at least five bridges wiped out by tropical storm Sarah in northern Honduras. The storm stalled over the region on Saturday, swelling rivers and damaging at least 20 roads. That has left more than 145 communities cut off and tens of thousands of people stranded. At least one death is blamed on the storm. The good news is that Sarah dissipates while moving into the Gulf of Mexico and tropical moisture may spike Florida's rain chances, but there is no chance of this developing into a tropical storm or hurricane in the near future. Here is the full forecast. Powerful storm in the western U.S. Heavy rain and flooding threat across the central Gulf Coast. A powerful system will continue to bring heavy mountain snow, rain, and high winds to the Pacific Northwest and Northern California through midweek. Heavy rain and flash flooding potential exists across the central Gulf Coast over the next few days, including the Florida Panhandle. A slight risk of two of four of excessive rainfall is in effect Tuesday. It seems like that is your lose day. Winter storm watches and warnings, even blizzard warnings for Washington State are up, so heed the warnings and click on your county for more information. A quick look at the GFS model shows that severe weather pattern from earlier today still sticking around now up in Nebraska there and the heavy snow falling in the west. Three hours from now, that snow will continue to fall as this system bombs out up in Canada, bringing heavy snow to the prairies. There is the remnants of Tropical Storm Sarah, which will be exploding Wednesday over Florida and potentially bring uh, some rain for the entire state. But take a look at what's coming in the Pacific Northwest midweek. Here's Wednesday and Thursday. Another atmospheric river is going to be drenching the region, and that could be some record-breaking rain totals and snow totals. Let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation. You see that area in yellow there developing uh, right here by Friday? So this is November 22nd, just four days out. And they could be seeing 16 to 20 inches of rain in Northern California near the coast. That's insane. That's catastrophic flooding, mudslides. And can you imagine the snow? Ho, ho, ho. Al Gore will not be happy. Look at that. It is showing over four feet of snow to be on the ground by Thursday and it continuing to pile up and all the way down the Sierra Spine through the end of November. Take a look at this snow pattern. The entire U.S. could see some snow by the first week of December. Well, except for Florida. Shut up, Al. Get your hole. Al Gore is not happy. No bunt cake for Al. Seismic update. 
No quakes of note. The largest rumbler is just popping off. We've got a 5.6 in Tonga. We've also got a 5.2 in the Philippines. Very low level activity worldwide. Worldwide volcano news. Short list today. Lee Toby continuing its assault with an 8,000 foot puff there. First on the list. Popo to 23,000 foot. Ibu to 8. Santo Ito, 14,000 foot blast. Raventador, 14,000 foot today. Canelon on the list. Or is it Canleon? My bad. 9,000 foot puff. Suanosima, 6,000 foot puff today from there. Lee Toby. Not much smoke coming out now. Good news. 10,000 foot puff reported. Popo to 23,000 foot and a good shot here from Sentinel-2. You can see the active cone, cinder cone here with lava emanating and a lava flow pushing to the west at Liwatobi Laki Laki. So lava flows continuing there. Ibu to 8,000 feet. Raventador on the list. Semaru, who knew? Now you do 14,000 foot blast today. Ducono to seven. Popo to 23. Swano Sima to six. Uh, Lee Toby to 10, wrapping up the list of worldwide volcanoes. A quick look at space weather. We can see the active regions that have turned around the limb. Let's take a look at the latest HMI intensity. Well, that baby just didn't want to load. But we can see these are the two active regions in question where the flaring has been happening. Active region 3899 and 3901. Earlier today, multiple M flares, nothing significant, even if there were CMEs, uh, based on the position they would be shooting away from Earth. But beautiful indeed, as solar activity is back up to moderate levels with a couple of low-level M flares, including an M1.7 at 732 UTC. And the source is a new region turning into view near the east land that we just showed you. And a number of new active regions were assigned on Monday that need to be monitored. Uh, the good news is the sunspots are tiny. These are not potentially X-flare potential, just tiny pinpricks on the disk. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is all qu calm and quiet. And there's a closer look at that M3.7 earlier today. 1900 times Earth's gravity, what could go wrong? China activates the world's most advanced hypergravity facility. The facility will feature three hypergravity centrifuges and 18 units, creating extreme conditions to shift heavier materials. All the links will be below. Someone sent this in to me earlier today. It's a book from 1837 about uh, the mound culture in the Americas and some of the artifacts they found, which are probably forever lost to science. An absolutely fascinating read uh, from hundreds of years ago at this point. And take a look at some of these urns that they found. Absolutely fantastic. The title of the book is American Antiquities and Discoveries in the West. If you're looking for the ultimate survival food, it's sweet potatoes. But if you don't live in zone seven or eight or higher, it's very hard to grow them unless you have a greenhouse, a rigid greenhouse, a geothermal greenhouse like we do. We're in zone 5A and this year will be our first sweet potato crop. I'm about to harvest it in just a few weeks here. But the reason sweet potatoes are so good for you is that they are a natural source of electrolytes and in a survival situation that is key. They have tons of potassium, which is what we need. Uh, but the potassium carries a charge that sends electrical signals between nerves, and it is uh, essential for life. They also won't... Spike your blood sugar. Sweet potatoes get their signature flavor from naturally occurring sugars. One medium sweet potato has around nine grams. For some contacts, that's about a quarter of what you would find in a regular soda. But unlike sugary beverages like a Coke, sweet potatoes are relatively high in fiber. And we need fiber. High fiber foods, including sweet potatoes, can boost the body's production of GLP-1, the hormone that drugs like Ozempic and Wagovi mimic. So they make you thin. Plus, they're rich in vitamins and minerals, which keeps you alive and thriving in the future. One medium sweet potato contains more than 100% of the recommended daily allowance of vitamin A, primarily in the form of beta carotene. So go get it 
and start growing some sweet potatoes. And if you could do me a favor, please check out my friend Sweet Yanja's Etsy store. She's been doing some beaded earrings and she's very upset that over the last year she only sold three products. So there's been a price reduction on her beaded bat necklaces. Those look amazing. So please support our friend and go check out her shop if this looks like something you'd be interested in. We'd appreciate it. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share the video. We are shadow banned. And without you, this channel cannot grow. Just share the video. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Be safe. We love you. Mm -hmm.